hello. If you have been watching my channel for some time now, when I was talking about companies like Netflix, I haven't been a big fan. I'm not a big fan of uh, streaming companies, for example. And there are a couple of reasons uh, for this. The most important reason is uh, the whole business model relies on creating content that is super, super expensive. And that content actually depreciates or amortizes, as we call it, through the years, uh, pretty much piling up on expenses for the company. And so typically, you enter a, uh, if you enter this field, field, you enter a very, very competitive uh, field in which um, these companies will have to keep producing amazing content, spending more and more money. And uh, at some point, there is almost an um, underflow of new people willing to uh, spend money to join the, the streaming company. And so it's always going to be a race, um, a race between um, creating better content and acquiring more customers. And these companies are already, already, like Netflix, for instance, is already so much big and so big and um, it has so much competition that I'm finding it a little bit hard to believe that they're going to keep growing at the, the pace that they have been growing in the past. Now, we still want to be examining exactly what is happening with the company. We don't just, uh, you know, operate on uh, fears or my things, my thoughts about the company. And so the first thing that I wanted to show you here is um, the thing that I have been showing in the funk uh, for the funk companies. The, how much uh, Netflix has been increasing through the last decade? And that's about 625%, as you'll see. It's one of the top ones. And um, this scares me a little bit, of course. And it mostly scares me, the, the main reason, is the fact that the P ratio, take a look at where the P ratio was, for instance. And uh, the price to free cash flow has been negative as well uh, in, some, in some years uh, after the adjustments for all the um, depreciation, amortization, uh, still in the negative over here for the price the free cash flow that the company has been generating. Now, what uh, after th after so many years have passed, and um, you know the stock price has been, as you'll see here, going on a roller coaster, and um, lately has been going down for the most part. It may be you know a potentially interesting purchase, especially as it keeps falling. And at some point over here, for instance, it was 175 potentially even less at, uh, at some point through the past uh, year or so when it has been dropping. Right now it has been increasing at a pretty nice rate as well, but it's nowhere near where it has been in the past, right? So there may be a small window for potentially purchasing the company as long as it's doing well. Now, has, how has it been doing? Obviously, they haven't been buying back shares uh, because they are smart and they don't really want to be buying an expensive stock when it was like $700, for example. This is the time to sell, not buy. And uh, right now, maybe it makes a little bit more sense to be buying back. But the liabilities of the company are pretty, pretty steep over here uh, compared to the free cash flow that they generate. Something to notice over here. And um, I have talked uh, extensively about Netflix and uh, their depreciation, how it works, for instance, depreciating every four years, for four years, and um, why you have to be really, really careful with, uh, with uh, potentially buying stock uh, for a company of this sort because of all these accounting things that are going on in the background. Now, the revenue growth of the company, 100% in the past 10, five years is pretty tremendous. Net income growth, free cash flow growth, pretty much has been growing. It's a, it's a growth story. It's a company that has been growing. But remember that lately we are having more competitors as well, right? Uh, very, very important. And this is why you may be looking at some uh, things in the armor here even though their total equity has been going up, you will see a little bit of a steadier type growth over here compared to the past where it was um, really, really uh, going upwards here. Now it's becoming a little bit more um, sideways, I should say. Now, in regards to the, the financial statements of the company, what is going on there? So let's take a little bit of, the, uh, a, little bit of a look at the income statements. We can always go back 10 years. And you will see that the company was generating 4.3 billion and uh, right now 31 billion over here, which is a pretty awesome revenue growth here. But you will see that recently it has been declining a little bit. Again, in the pandemic years, this hasn't been doing that badly because people were staying at home and uh, pretty much uh, adding more uh, subscriptions for the company. But lately it has been going down a little bit and it's a little bit worrisome. Now, the net income that the company has been generating is very, very poor compared to the revenue. 112 million, for instance, here. 226 million and then 4.4 billion out of 31 billion dollars. This is a big, big problem for the company. 
Because again, tons of expenses for producing the content, right? It's not easy to be producing top content that people want to watch. All this um, content that um, Netflix generates takes up a lot of money, salaries and all that. Uh, the costs are insane and this is why the company doesn't really generate that much uh, net income here. Now, what about the balance sheet of the company? Let's take a look. Um, and remember, the company has also been selling some stock, right? I mean, they have been getting some additional paid in capital some years, for instance. Not tremendous, but still. And the total equity from 1.3 billion growing to 20 billion over here. Uh, that's at least a good thing to see for the company, for sure. And they do have quite some debt too. About 14 billion as we saw over here. Total debt. Now, what about the, the cash flow? Now, take a look at this one. Again, we can take it back 10 years and you will see that we started with just 100 million and now, right now we're sitting at 4.5, remember? And uh, yeah, you would expect more net income, but again, the expenses are insane for the company. And it's also worth noting, again, if you go back to our stock analysis page, it's very, very worthwhile noticing that the company's uh, market cap is $157 billion and they're generating like $4 billion a year, right? That's very, very well wa worth noting. Uh, because you can compare it to how much the company generates and how much the company's market cap is. And it used to be significantly higher too when it was like, like way more expensive than now. Now, 4.5, almost about $4.5 billion. And uh, remember the, that net income extracts expenses like um, depreciation, amortization, for example, or stock-based compensation. But uh, since these are uh, known, no, no cash expenses, these are not cash expenses. Like depreciation is, for instance, think about it if you have a car which you bought $30,000 uh, five years ago and today is worth $10,000. The car depreciated, lost its value, but you haven't really lost any cash. And so the cash flow statement is, is about the cash. And since uh, cash hasn't been affected, it has to be added back to the cash flow. And this is why we're starting with $4.5 billion and we add this depreciation amortization. But we, do, we still have some expenses for other non-cash items, for example. Again, it takes a lot of money and a lot of assets to be producing all these things. And so we're going down to, at some years, even losing money, like minus 2 billion over here, minus 2.8. So for a while, uh, Netflix was losing money. And then 2.4 and then 3.92. So going up and down like a, a roller coaster that we don't like to see. 2020 was actually their best year when compared to 2022 fiscal year, 202 billion dollars. And um, uh, the free cash flow, again, losing money and just making 1.6 billion in the past uh, um, pretty much uh, fiscal year. Remember when the Netflix became uh, cash flow positive back in 2020, 2 billion and right now they're making less. So it's really, really worrisome if you ask me. I, I'm not a big fan of these kinds of companies with, which can have uh, tons of roller coasters of this sort. If you take a little bit of a look at um, our stock analysis page and our stock news here, you will see that uh, Wolf Research, for example, downgrades Netflix and mid-rising growth concerns, which I fully anticipate. And um, Netflix pa password crackdown is expected to drive more revenue. That's the good thing about it. But again, it's um, pretty much going back and forth. Sometimes it's going to be positive, sometimes it's going to be negative. It's not really a business model that I love to see myself. You may feel different, but it's not really my favorite. And I, I could potentially see myself owning Netflix if it was really, really cheap. That could be dropping the risk a little bit. But is that really, really cheap right now? Let's take a look again using our stock evaluator that is current cash flow model. The revenue growth the company has been achieving pretty tremendous, 24% on average, 22% uh, on average, sorry, 22.3. So we're going to go relatively high. What we, whoops, not 19, that's a little bit too high. What we did with um, our earlier video, actually, when I was doing uh, Meta and Apple, we went a little bit higher. And we're going to go 10, um, let's go 13 actually, and 16, be a little bit uh, more aggressive here. The net income margins for the company about 14% usually. You'll see it here, although the average has been 11%, it has been affected by uh, this year, pretty much 2018, where it was like 7%. You will see then it started to increase 9%, 11%, 17 and 14 So I would say that probably around 14 maybe a little bit less. So just to be safe, let's go 12, 13 and 14 I think that makes a ton of sense. And you can kind of see the averages over here, five-year average, the year and last year. The free cash flow margins now, again, this is a big, big problem for the company because their cash flow is highly, highly variable because of the issues we talked about earlier. And so this is where you kind of have to, uh, I would say, think it through. 
Myself, I would probably start with using some lower, lesser values and then try to go somewhere near to what the companies tend to uh, generate, like somewhere near 80 to 90 percent. But I think I would start off with something like 50, 60 and 70. And the company is not really achieving this for the most part. It's like 2020 when it was like the best year when they achieved 70 percent. So you have to be super, super careful here. And again, our patrons can try different scenarios. Becoming a patron you know, gives you full access to the tool. And you can become one by following the link in the description box below this video if you're interested. And 13% for the annual return that I typically ask for. Now, when we hit calculate, we will say that Netflix is even at $355 is exceedingly expensive right now. And so it's nowhere near being a buy for me. I, frankly, I would want it to be probably even less than 100 to think about buying this one because of the risks that I mentioned uh, throughout the video. So it's really, really expensive for me. And remember, it's coming off of much, much lower values, much, much lower stock price. Like last, uh, if you take a look at the one year chart, for instance, over here, it was uh, the close was 170, as you'll see. So it was much, much closer to 100 bucks. Right now, it's, you know, it's skyrocketed again. But 355, it's just not for me. It's too expensive. And I think I would avoid for now. But do tell me what you think about Netflix. Is it a buy? Maybe you prefer some other streaming company of that sort? Let me know with a comment below and I'll see you in the next video again. Thanks for watching guys. Bye bye.